Hello, can you explain the bones of the upper limb to me? Of course. The upper limb is divided into the shoulder girdle and the free upper limb. The shoulder girdle connects the limb to the axial skeleton and consists of two main bones, the scapula and the clavicle. The free upper limb includes the arm, humerus, the forearm, ulna and radius, and the hand, carpal bones, metacarpal bones, and phalanges. Can you describe the scapula for me? Certainly. The scapula, also known as the shoulder blade, is a flat, triangular bone located on the posterior side of the rib cage. It's a complex bone with several important features. Facies dorsalis. This is the dorsal surface of the scapula, which faces outward. Facies costalis, the costal surface, which faces the rib cage. Margins. The scapula has three margins, lateral, medial, and superior. Angles. There are three angles, superior, lateral, and inferior. Some notable structures on the scapula include spina scapulae, a prominent ridge running across the dorsal surface, dividing it into the supraspinous fossa, above the spine, and the infraspinous fossa, below the spine. Acromion, an extension of the spine that forms the highest point of the shoulder, which articulates with the clavicle. Coracoid process, a hook-like projection that serves as an attachment site for muscles such as the pectoralis minor and the biceps brachia. Glenoid cavity, a shallow, concave structure that articulates with the head of the humerus to form the shoulder joint. What about the clavicle? The clavicle, or collarbone, acts as a strut between the scapula and the sternum, providing support and stability to the shoulder. Key features include sternal end, this end articulates with the manubrium of the sternum, forming the sternoclavicular joint. Acromial end. This end articulates with the acromion of the scapula, forming the acromioclavicular joint. Superior and inferior surfaces. The superior surface is smoother, while the inferior surface has ridges and grooves for muscle and ligament attachments. Anterior and posterior margins. The margins serve as attachment sites for muscles like the deltoid and trapezius. Costoclavicular ligament attachment. This is a roughened area near the sternal end for ligament attachment. Conoid tubercle. Located near the acromial end, this is the attachment site for the conoid ligament, part of the coracoclavicular ligament. Can you explain the humerus? The humerus is the long bone of the upper arm and plays a crucial role in the function and movement of the upper limb. The proximal end of the humerus features head, a rounded, smooth structure that fits into the glenoid cavity of the scapula, forming the shoulder joint. Greater tubercle, a large, prominent area on the lateral side of the humerus, serving as an attachment site for the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor muscles. Lesser tubercle, located on the anterior side, it's the attachment site for the subscapularis muscle. Intertubercular sulcus, bicipital groove, a groove between the greater and lesser tubercles, where the tendon of the long head of the biceps brachii runs. Anatomical neck, just below the head, it's a common site for fractures. Surgical neck, a narrow area below the tubercles, also a frequent fracture site. The shaft of the humerus has. Deltoid tuberosity, a roughened area on the lateral side for the attachment of the deltoid muscle. Radial groove, a shallow groove on the posterior side, accommodating the radial nerve and deep brachial artery. The distal end includes capitulum, a round, smooth structure on the lateral side that articulates with the head of the radius. Trochlea, a spool-shaped structure on the medial side that articulates with the trochlear notch of the ulna. Medial and lateral epicondyles, projections on either side of the distal humerus for muscle attachment. The medial epicondyle is larger and serves as the attachment site for the flexor muscles of the forearm, while the lateral epicondyle is for the extensor muscles. What about the radius and ulna? The radius and ulna are the two bones of the forearm. The radius is located on the lateral side, thumb side, and the ulna is on the medial side, pinky side. Radius. Head. A disc-shaped structure that articulates with the capitulum of the humerus and the radial notch of the ulna. Neck, just below the head, providing a slight narrowing. Radial tuberosity, 
a roughened area on the medial side for the attachment of the biceps brachii tendon. Shaft, slightly curved with interosseous borders facing the ulna. Distal end, includes the styloid process, a bony projection on the lateral side, and the carpal articular surface, which articulates with the carpal bones to form part of the wrist joint. Ulna, olecranon, the prominent, pointed bone at the elbow's back, forming the elbow's bony tip. Trochlear notch, a large, curved area that articulates with the trochlea of the humerus. Coronoid process, a projection on the anterior side, just below the trochlear notch. Radial notch, a small, shallow notch on the lateral side that articulates with the head of the radius. Shaft, long and slightly curved with interosseous borders facing the radius. Distal end, features the head, which is smaller than the proximal end, and the styloid process, a pointed structure for ligament attachment. How are the bones of the hand structured? The hand is a complex structure composed of three groups of bones. Carpal bones, eight small bones arranged in two rows. These bones are essential for the wrist's complex movements. Proximal row, from lateral to medial scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and pisiform. Distal row, from lateral to medial trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. Metacarpal bones, five bones forming the palm. Each metacarpal bone has a base, shaft, and head. The bases articulate with the carpal bones, and the heads articulate with the proximal phalanges of the fingers. First metacarpal, associated with the thumb and is the shortest and thickest. Second to fifth metacarpals, vary in length and thickness. Phalanges, 14 bones in the fingers. Each finger has three phalanges, proximal, middle, and distal, except for the thumb, which has only two, proximal and distal. What about the joints of the upper limb? The upper limb joints allow a wide range of movements essential for various activities. Shoulder joint, glenohumeral joint, a ball and socket joint allowing a wide range of movements, including flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, internal and external rotation, and circumduction. It's supported by several muscles, including the rotator cuff muscles, ligaments, and the labrum, a fibrocartilaginous structure that deepens the glenoid cavity. Elbow joint, a hinge joint formed by three articulations. Humeralner joint, between the trochlea of the humerus and the trochlear notch of the ulna. Humeroradial joint, between the capitulum of the humerus and the head of the radius. Proximal radio ulnar joint, between the head of the radius and the radial notch of the ulna, allowing pronation and supination of the forearm. Wrist joint, radiocarpal joint, formed between the distal end of the radius and the proximal row of carpal bones, except the pisiform. It allows flexion, extension, abduction, radial deviation, adduction, ulnar deviation, and circumduction. The wrist joint is supported by ligaments, including the radiocarpal ligaments and the triangular fibrocartilage complex, TFCC. Each joint is stabilized by a combination of ligaments, muscles, tendons, and other structures to provide both stability and a wide range of motion. This is a lot of information. Can you summarize the main points? Certainly. The upper limb consists of the shoulder, girdle, and the free upper limb. Key bones include Scapula, flat bone with important features like the spine, acromion, and glenoid cavity. Clavicle, acts as a strut between the scapula and sternum. Humerus, long bone of the upper arm with distinct proximal, shaft, and distal features. Radius and ulna, bones of the forearm, with the radius on the thumb side and the ulna on the pinky side. Hand bones, comprising carpal bones, wrist, metacarpal bones, palm, and phalanges, fingers. Joints of the upper limb include the shoulder, elbow, and wrist joints, each allowing a range of movements necessary for daily activities. Thank you. This was very informative. You're welcome. Understanding the anatomy of the upper limb is crucial for diagnosing and treating injuries effectively. Don't hesitate to ask if you have more questions. Thank you for listening. If our podcast has been valuable to you, we would greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star rating and write a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, or subscribe, like, and share on our YouTube channel. 
Your support helps us greatly with discoverability. We hope to see you soon.